Hey, I'm Brian with the HVAC School Podcast and HVACRschool.com. Today we're headed out to make a diagnosis on a really big house that has some pretty major problems. They've got crown molding that's cracking, they've got really expensive paneling on the wall that's having issues, and so we're gonna use a blower door, we're going to use some pressure pans, we're going to use some thermal imaging cameras to find the source of the problem, hopefully give them a diagnosis that's going to help them not have these problems and also maybe be a little more comfortable. There's a couple different categories of problems that customers have in their homes that we can help diagnose with tools like a duct leakage tester, like a, a DM32 high precision manometer that we use in this house, and also uh, pressure pans and blower doors, those sorts of things. And those categories are comfort, so if the customer is uncomfortable in certain rooms, uh, health, and a lot of cases it's the customers having symptoms, respiratory problems, uh, maybe they're seeing some growth, uh, maybe they're seeing a moisture issue, different places, uh, and then also efficiency and longevity of the systems in their home and the home itself. In this particular case, we've got a customer who has the third problem where they have some actual paneling and some crown molding that's having issues. So we need to find a diagnosis for that. Also, they're noticing some places where it looks like there's been moisture, especially on the ceiling. So we're gonna look for ways of preventing moisture intrusion into the home or possible causes. We picked a uh, beautiful day to do home performance testing. At least, uh, at least we know the uh, humidity will be as relative humidity outside is pretty high too. In the door. Hey, there's Max. Max is assembling the blower door while the alarm's going off. So, just another normal day in the home performance. Got the pressure pan, got the blower itself, got a thermal imaging camera, and our secret weapon, Max. We're also going through and testing all of the equipment, um, checking airflow with the true flow, true flow grid. Um, we've gone through and confirmed relative humidity with the Testo 440 IAQ. Um, and it's actually not bad inside the house. There seems to be some challenges in different zones, different spots due to infiltration, but in general, the relative humidity is actually pretty decent. So this is the Testo 440 IAQ. Been using that to measure relative humidity. Inside the house, it's generally right about um, 50%, but in the attic, we're seeing much higher than that. I'm actually doing some data logging up by the up by the ceiling in the front just to see what we've got. And it's a little bit a little bit higher, but not much. Now we're gonna do some thermal imaging and the blower door. We're gonna do thermal imaging beforehand in some of the areas of challenge. As you can see, the main the main complaint is cracking all around in the crown molding. In this coffered ceiling, there's cracking. There's cracking along the north wall. Um, some cold wall complaints. You can see here on this thermostat, we got an April air thermostat, and it's showing 49% uh, relative humidity with the weather that we've got outside. It's in the, in the mid 70s outside. But we're also getting cracking along the paneling along on the wall. So just a lot of cracking of paneling. Can, there's actually some cracks up there along the edge. So let's go through a few scenarios as though you were able to get to 50, okay? 
So do the set pressure. Uh, so I hit hold, so I can hold these numbers, and the fan dies, and they'll stay here. So even if I want to, I can go back and hit CFM and read those numbers. Hmm. All right. Until I hit hold again, it'll allow me to do any other calculations. All right. It's telling me here I have an effective leakage area in square inches of around uh, 13,000. Uh, something, time, whatever the square root of 13,000 is, that's telling tell me how big my hole is. Square root of? Yeah, square root of 13, 16. What yeah. times what equals 13, 16? That tells you how big of a hole this house has. Gotcha. All right, I'll hit hole and clear this out. So normally, let's go back to see if them. Nine square foot hole. Nine square foot hole. Okay. Um, so normally, when you're able to get to 50, so your process would be, you know, set pressure 25, check everything's okay, make sure your range matches the fan, all right? So you would do a set pressure of 50, all right? And you're going to look for your percentage that's happening here. We were 100%, so it wasn't worth doing this, okay? So usually <coughs> you should be around anywhere from 40 to, say, 70%. Whatever that percentage is, now I'm going to go back and hit set uh, speed. And this is speed ratio. This is 100% all full on, which is where we were, versus zero and it's off. So if I were to go 70%, take this to 70%. want to do that is in case somebody walks in and out like oh I left that in the truck and somebody opens that door and they change the pressure and they close the door they say oh, well, pressure no pressure I want to fly out of here if I do set speed it doesn't matter if anybody opens or closes the doors it just changes our reading in terms of how leaky the house is so oh, you have a big old opening now so set speed means the fan will just run at a normal speed it's not trying to match pressure okay so I do set pressure it says I gotta get to 50 Whatever I got to get 50. So, oh, big hole. Ah, more pressure, more fan. Ah, holes closed. And I don't want to do with that. <coughs> so, whenever you're going to do the diagnostics, you go ahead and do a set uh, pressure 50, get your readings, and then read your percentage. Once I get my percentage, I do set speed, whatever the percentage is 55, set. <laughs> kind of diagnostics are two people right so one person's checking things uh, outside doing a few things somebody setting the blower door next person setting a bunch of tubing like we did uh, run stuff and you go around and document quickly together take pictures do all that okay I got a map so yeah we'll get you a, we'll get you a sidekick Max is the sidekick Max is the sidekick yeah actually well he's kind of the he's kind of the front kick yeah. But then the sidekick is the one who talks to the customers okay. and plays defense. Got it. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's this guy. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, that's very common. Right. So here's this is an indication of air infiltration. Right? See this fuzzy stuff we're getting across this area here? So this is a framing separation. This is probably where a little rim joist shows up. See our difference of ceiling heights, walls potentially. Okay. Mm -hmm. I would expect to see something on the window. Sort of the purplish fuzzy. fuzzy yeah, so it's kind of fuzzy and this wasn't here earlier. So we, that's why we always do a check uh, with the camera before, right. knowing that afterwards we're getting uh, something that's different. So, so if you weren't careful, you'd be like, oh, you're missing insulation. But no, the insulation's there. We have an air leakage issue here. Hmm. See, that's why you've got to get a camera where you can lock on to the colors. Because when the colors keep moving around like this, right. you're, you're totally lost. Lock it. Yeah, it's going to change again though. Yeah, it is, uh, uh, uh. Okay, so here's your uh, potential signs that we have air leakage because I can now see it's, it's very granular and fuzzy. Uh huh. Yeah. That right hand corner of the wall yes. is the spot too, right? It's yeah. not just the, because it's the corner that it's doing that. An air leakage is 
Oh, yeah, right there's some yeah. in front. Barely between lack of sealing on there, not necessarily a lack of insulation. That's right, air, uh, insulation, here we go. Air, insulation is not a, uh, uh, air sealing. Up here to the left, near this. So, as you can see right here, right? Crown molding. Yeah. Up, up and by this crown molding where it's cracking, there's some spots, and then here. Yeah, the whole crack, the whole side of where right. it's meeting there. Yep. So let me do this, right? So it's cracking just above my hand, though. Um, it's actually a little bit lower. Here. Uh, yeah, okay. is where the fuzziness is at. Okay. I would take some pictures of that thing. Yeah, that great. Look at that corner of him. Which one? No, just this, just this edge here. Yeah. yeah this, this big crack here. I'm reading uh, pressure differential between here and here. There's none, right? So that's like zero. And if you're never sure, like, well, what's what? The number is absolute. So for some reason, if that was negative six, it means you have the wrong port, right? Mm. <clears throat> the number is relative to that blower door number. Okay, so we're only getting 20, right? So the highest I could ever really get is 20. In, in theory, you may get slightly over if there's wind in the attic or something, but in general, closer I am to 20 means that I'm directly connected outside. So I'm connected outside, but not so much that it's a direct connection, which means there's an indirect pathway that's going from here up behind that drywall up out through the attic vents. Okay. So there's actually a ratio between this number and how much leakage is coming into here. But I can tell that, oh, that is. About 30 yeah, 30%. Right and the connectivity is, is kind of a way to visualize it. So you, you have significant connectivity. I think Max got it locked, didn't he? Yeah, I tried to take a picture. Oh, the, I told the, you oh, that. Oh, okay. I told you that Max is a smart kid, didn't I? That's how he said it earlier. Yeah, it was. Oh, when he was standing there. But Don't say that, that other thing. Before that. Right. Don't say that other one. And we know we can't do this on glass, right? We're all, we're all good with that. You guys level one at all? Level one? I got the level one. Level one? Level one IR certified? No. Uh, I would definitely be getting that. I, I added that to your email. Right. You need to give us an email. I, I, that's why I asked you that whole question. Instead, you went off and changed the subject on me. What? What, what should my guys get? What do they need? I went off on the whole thing at level one and this and that. Did you? Yeah. Uh, maybe I didn't. Maybe I didn't read it. You didn't read it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, let's go and check on. It's getting late now. We got to do this. We want to check. On. <laughs> Sean's peeking around the corner. As you can see, you have leakage right in the boots. I'm sure I doubt the boots are sealed. Well, we know that boot's not good anyway because you can just look and see some. Uh, whatever we call it. Rusting. Rusting? That one's rusting, isn't it? Well, all the, the boots, the boot tops are rusting. Okay, so here, my, we're, we're clearly just not connected. See the difference here between uh, uh, the temperature? The temperature is very consistent, right? Mm -hmm. I don't see any d d temperature difference, right? But over here, this whole thing is completely different temperature. Does that mean they're not connected? Well, it means it hasn't changed. It means there, but there, there could be uh, potential leakage or issues behind it. See that that, uh, that piece of trim is completely different temperature. And we probably have leakage just going down behind that wall. No, but this whole, this is a drop down. So this whole ceiling drops down. Right, but it's still frame down. leakage is going down this framing that's happening. Right. Here. Right. Yeah. This is going to be pulling it from the attic switch. And then you're negative, you'll be pulling it from outside and the attic. Sure. Down the uh, corner there. Mm -hmm. That's that big hole we were seeing? Probably, right. Yep. Hmm. They were complaining about the cold wall in here, right? Yeah. In the bathroom, right? Yeah. yeah. You want to get the you want to get the pressure pan and check this max. 60. And I fixed that based upon the temperatures we had out out on the hallway. Below the windows. Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh whoa! Hello. That looks like a horror. It looks like a horror movie. 
I, I watch really mild horror movies. Up here in this, <laughs> up here in this corner, too. Yeah, so, that's real bad. Ho ho horrors and building science. It's not, but not as bad as that corner. Right. Now, that's an in that, that I don't think is a change of that corner changes. That's literally an exterior corner. Right. And then he complains about this floor being super, super cold, mm -hmm. which makes sense because underneath that window, do you think it could be pulling in? How, how could that be? How could no, that be pulling? It's, it's actually, again, it's the uh, rim joist is not sealed. So you're anywhere you've got a floor, you have that potential risk. Is that your gauge? That's my gauge. That's yours. Yeah. And that was too right. If you can get a deep enough pull on it, a lot of times you'll see dust okay. pull out. Oh. From the shoe mode and everything. Right. He'll actually watch it with it under. You can watch the dust pull out on the floor. Uh, EHR. You hang out with uh, Dave. Yeah. Yeah. And. Nikki. Nikki, Dave, Crystal. Anything interesting? Seems better in dun, here. Dun, 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 dun. Except. Oh. Here's a toe. Except up here. Whoa, 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 what's that? Oh, that's just a bad fan. Well, to the left of the bath fan. Oh, yeah. As well, quite a bit in that wall. Hard to take a photo of that one. You can try that. Sorry. Definitely connected. Go ahead and check your cameras. Whoa! What do you got? This one's 16. 16? Yeah. Whoa. Every one of these is 16 plus. Yeah. Oh, the vent? Yeah, you check the vent too. Seal. Yeah, the vents the vents aren't aren't bad. That looks awesome. In conclusion, I want to thank Joe Medosh for helping out uh, so much with this video. A uh, really smart building science guy, somebody who uh, you're going to hear more of. He's partnered with the Hayward Score, uh, which is a great way for you to find out from your customers what health issues they're having in their homes. It's a healthy home score. Find out more by looking up Hayward Score online. And then what we found in this house was there wasn't a single problem. There was multiple small problems that added up. The biggest problem that we're going to have a really hard time addressing is that front wall where you saw the stone and we could see that there was some intrusion into that wall when we were using the thermal imaging camera. That's going to be a tough one to, to solve, obviously. It's going to require some uh, intrusive action. But we did find that we could use some additional leak sealing in the second floor. That's something we'll be able to deal with pretty easily, doing some leak sealing. We're also going to bring in some outside air with a dehumidifier. Uh, not only will that help, I mean, it never hurts to have a little more humidity control, but we're going to bring in outside air and pressurize the space to help reduce some of those negative pressures that can exist inside the home that draws air in. And so it'll hopefully, uh, hopefully solve some of those problems. Truth be told, in a big house like this, the best way to solve the problem is to not have it in the first place. That's why it's so important to think about proper design 
when you're building a home to make sure that you are all properly air sealed and you've gone through uh, all the proper design procedures, looking at dehumidification, uh, looking at proper attachment of the crown molding. A lot of what we see going on in this house, we believe to be due to the way that the crown molding itself was attached and the sealant that they used. Thanks for watching. We'll talk next time.